The Center for the Improvement of Human Functioning International presents this luncheon lecture. The topic today, depression. Your presenter, Dr. Hugh Reardon. Good afternoon. Hopefully I'm speaking on overcoming depression, not just depression. Well, we ha happy Halloween to you, and uh, particularly on this beautiful day. I hope you notice the, the leaves are turning uh, rather beautifully in uh, Wichita. Uh, I would uh, ask how many of you have contemplated or tried suicide, but in a group that's not a very good question to ask. <laughs> and besides, I assume you're here not because you have any depression, but we all have friends who have depression. Uh, so on behalf of your friends, I want to thank you for being here. Well, I thought you might like to know that before I knew any of this, uh, long before the center, uh, I, I would consider suicide. As a matter of fact, I had a very elegant uh, system worked out. Uh, I was a pilot for many years, and uh, I had it worked out. What I would do would be to fly over the Gulf of Mexico and then spray the cabin with magnesium dust. I don't know if you remember, those of you who are old enough, in the olden days, they didn't have flashes or anything like that. It was a little channel that you put magnesium dust and you lit it, and that was the flash. So, I, my contemplated thing was to fly over the um, Gulf of Mexico, spray the cabin with uh, magnesium dust, and light a cigar. And the plane would disappear. <laughs> so, I'm sharing that with you as a, uh, one, one of uh, interesting ways. But I thought it was a pretty, pretty neat way. Uh, now, in this morning's paper, there is a nice ad, are your golden years turning blue? And uh, it says, depression is a significant problem for older Americans. This always ticks me off. But the symptoms can be difficult to recognize. If you or someone you love is over 60, that means you're an older American. That was a long time ago for me. Feelings of sadness and anxiety, loss of interest in things previously enjoyed, significant changes in eating or sleeping patterns, feelings of worthlessness, you may be interested in learning about a research investigational drug. <clears throat> so there's a number you can call in the paper. This is from the, um, the latest uh, American Medical News. This is, this is the largest ad in there. It's a multi-page thing. It's how to measure your patient's depression. Let me see, do I have the... And of course, you, it's very appropriate. You see the person in, uh, in dark and looking down and so forth. Too tired to exercise, feeling sad, missing work again. Uh, and then this is another SSRI, serotonin uptake kind of medication. It's the newest one, Lexapro. And uh, here's, um, here's how it shows in 10, 10 milligrams a day, significantly improved depression. And um, the interesting thing, the placebo is here. <clears throat> which at least initially is almost as good as the medication. I mean, if you look at their, if you look at their own graphs that they're publishing, <laughs> I find that very interesting. Uh, but anyway, that's the latest thing. So if you want to, uh, um, they say they have a lower dropout rate due to adverse events. So that's good. The, the people keep taking the medicine. Um, so uh, anyway, I, d I wanted to call your attention that there are new medications and things like that. We, we have a somewhat different approach here. Uh, looking at things. So, uh, those who have been here before, how many have never been here before? Just want to see. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, I don't just spoon feed you things, you have to work. So, you have a questionnaire. If you want the answers, you need to fill them out. And uh, that's where we'll start, and that'll be kind of our guide for what goes on uh, this afternoon. <clears throat> okay, each year, these are statistics, might be useful. Uh, depression affects about how many American adults? Do you throw out a guess? Two and a half million. I'm sorry? Two and, a half million. Two and a half million. Okay. Anybody else? The statistics are supposedly 17 to 19 million American adults are depressed uh, each year. Starting with real basic things, what, what is one common human response to inadequate vitamin C? You can throw out any numbers. But for this, it's depression. Every medical textbook, at least up until a few years ago, 
indicated that one of the most common effects of inadequate vitamin C was depression. However, you very seldom go to a psychiatrist and do they measure your vitamin C level. I will share a little bit. Uh, this is many years ago. I had a lady who was a teacher, and uh, she was uh, profoundly depressed. She'd had three years of psychotherapy prior, and then uh, she uh, came in. I was going to be going out of town, so as a result of that, um, we did a vitamin C level because she had that quality. She had profound fatigue, not able to function at all. Uh, she had no detectable uh, vitamin C and um, gave her 500 milligrams of vitamin C, uh, which is not by our standards very much. In a couple of weeks, she thought, this is every day, she thought that a miracle had occurred. Of course, no miracle had occurred. She was low in vitamin C, and depression is one of the natural consequences of that. And at that time, uh, because uh, she was a teacher, had very good um, insurance, uh, I could have seen her every week for two years, and they would have paid the entire bill, which would have been a lot of money. Our bill was for two office calls and three vitamin C levels, and the company would not pay it, of course, because vitamin C has nothing to do with depression, according to their uh, payment schedule. She did go to the insurance commissioner and got paid. Uh, <coughs> this would be a good year to go to the insurance commission. <coughs> but anyway, so you know, vitamin C is one of those things that reduces depression. And if you're depressed, it certainly is one thing to consider that you ought to do. Of course, man does not, or woman does not live by vitamin C alone. So we'll go to th number three. True or false, it is possible to become depressed because of the lack of a sufficient amount of a single trace element. What do you think? True. Hey, going along with the group. Okay. Uh, at this point, I, I just want to play a little audio tape of a person who did have this problem. Okay? And through the miracle of communicating with whoever is back of me, behind the blind, <laughs> we'll hear an audio tape, I think. I did not feel better for about a month or so. I was getting more depressed because I had two grandbabies that were going to come the end of July. And I didn't want to see these grandbabies, and that's rather odd for a grandmother. I knew I wasn't up to helping these children of mine with those children. And I knew I had to go back to teach. I knew we needed the income, and yet the year I had taught, I went and plotted away, and I was only there by walking in and walking out and trying to get some rest. I never got any sleep. And I wasn't worrying about my students because I felt confident that I could teach these students. I teach learning disabled students. I loved my job, but I didn't feel up to it. I knew something was wrong. I tried hypnosis at a different location than here. I feel like if I had tried it here, it might have helped. I tried the hypnosis to no avail. I tried several psychiatrists. One psychiatrist knew enough to send me here when the medication I took I responded completely the opposite of what the medication was supposed to help me with. And um, so the thing that changed it was calling back to the center and letting them know that I was not feeling any better. They decided to up the zinc that I was getting and give me double amount of liquid zinc, and Dr. Reardon told me how to take it. Instead of, instead of having it in a whole lot of water, I had it just in a smidgen of water. And in two days' time, when I had the double zinc, my husband is at the back. You can wave at them. He can tell you he had a new wife, and he wasn't sure whether he was going to cope with a new wife because he was always ahead of me, but now I'm way ahead of him. He's going to, <laughs> he's going to get a hair analysis soon once he decides to. <laughs> um, we have even been able to bring my daughter over here who is severely depressed, and we know she will get help. She has had a hair analysis and knows that she has some of the same nutrients needs that I have, but not the need for zinc. So if we had filled her up with zinc, it wouldn't have done the same thing. But we're all happy about the two new grandbabies, and I've been taking the grandbabies to the movies to do anything, to whatever, 
or um, being, being a grandmother in the shape that I wanted to be, I've been able to do even better with my students at school. My learning disabled students are not only not two to four years behind, they're ahead of their third grade class. And um, I would attribute it to being on top of things nutrition wise. I've done some more research here at the library and I feel these things are so different than when they kind of thought, well, it must be all in your head, honey. And uh, when they didn't offer me anything except drugs, and um, the drugs did not help, and I could not sleep at night. Literally, I just walked the floors. And by morning time on the weekend, I would not feel on Sunday like going to church because I knew if I got to church by 11 o'clock, I would be dizzy. I would not be able to walk straight. So this wasn't just a light depression. It was and an inability to cope with life. Inability to enjoy my family. We couldn't go out to dinner together because I was allergic to so many foods. Now I've gained too much, and now I'm glad to try to diet and watch what I eat. There's only one item that I cannot eat, and that's MSG, monsodium glutamate. This was the right answer instead of these 12 other doctors that would not look at nutrition. Well, there's several important things that she mentioned in, in that little piece. One is that it was important to measure what's going on. If, if you gave 100 people who were depressed zinc, 99 are not going to do much with that. I mean, it's, most people, that's not their problem. But in her case, th this happened to be her particular thing. So the capacity to measure what's going on in somebody, which is really what most of today's presentation is about, is, is very important. You uh, look at the biochemistry and see what the problems are, what's missing, or what needs to be improved upon, and then you can do a great deal. She also indicated that she wasn't doing very well initially. And again, that's why you have follow-ups to see what's going on. Uh, her initial zinc, we knew it was low, was not sufficient to raise her uh, to a level that she needed. So. You have the initial evaluation, you have the capacity to have feedback and see what's going on, and in this case, uh, this lady was, was not doing well, and only uh, increasing her zinc uh, was what really eliminated her depression. Keep in mind that zinc uh, is involved in at least 100 enzyme systems in the brain alone. So it's a very important uh, trace mineral, certainly not the only one, but one that is worthy of consideration when uh, brain tissue function is not optimal. It, it, was, it is kind of interesting, we, we end, do end up seeing a, a number of uh, family members, and it is interesting that suddenly from being relatively non-functional to zooming ahead of her husband's activity uh, changes things, and then we realize that maybe we're not in as good shape as we could be. Well, number four, uh, moving on if we can get through. The serotonin tends to improve mood and promote relaxation. True or false? Okay, that's a generally understood thing. When measuring a serotonin metabolite in the urine, which is called 5-HIA, which of the following are known to raise serotonin levels? In other words, if you're going to do a study and you're going to collect the urine for 24 hours, you get a note from the laboratory saying these things are either going to raise or lower serotonin. Okay? So, there's a list here, avocados, pineapple, pregnancy, eggplant, plums, walnuts, or all of them. Any thoughts on which of these are going to raise serotonin? All of them, including pregnancy. That is right, not exactly a food. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get down to this uh, later on, but if you've uh, had a full complement of food today, uh, you have an antidepressant meal, actually, which we'll get into a little bit more. Number six, true or false, aging and alcohol tend to lower serotonin levels. True, that is right. Here we are with what foods in today's menu have high serotonin levels? Anybody? Did you have the avocado dressing? There's bananas and walnuts. 
All of them have uh, the capacity to raise serotonin level. Of course, as we get older, our blood-brain barrier gets less of a barrier, and it's easier to get these nutrients uh, into the brain. So you've had, with the walnut bread, the banana sorbet, <coughs> and the um, a few bananas elsewhere, I guess, and uh, the avocado, you've had a pretty good uh, boost in serotonin. Which leads us to number eight, true or false, many people report bananas reduce their depression. That actually is true. That's from a British study. Several factors in here from a recent British study. Number 10, in studies uh, at two area hospitals, what percentage of admissions with the diagnosis of depression had low plasma vitamin C levels? Actually, we did this a number of years ago, uh, both here and uh, another facility uh, about 30 miles north of here. <coughs> Any idea what percent? These are people, they, their initial diagnosis is depression. What percentage do you think were low in vitamin C? 50%? It's good. Actually, it's it was 30%. <laughs> We've got you tuned in there, but might be might be relevant. So, you know, if 30%, in other words, if you took 100 people who are depressed without checking the level, and gave them all vitamin C, 30% would get better, and statistically that would be below placebo levels. So, oh, it doesn't work. That's why you need to, the important thing to separate out from these large groups is the more precise biochemistry. So the people who are low in vitamin C obviously will respond more to the vitamin C than the people who are not. So that's another important thing. Number 11, what percentage of new patients seen at the center have some component of depression, would you guess? 40%. Okay, very good. 40% is actually about 30%. So that was just uh, Marilyn Landreth, one of our people who looks at statistics, just uh, ran that statistic last week to find out what's going on. Uh, in the book, this is number 12, this is the book, which is upstairs. I think it's in our library also. You can get it if you want. Uh, I don't agree with everything in there, but it's a good book if you want to start looking at how foods and nutrients affect mood. It's, it's really good. It's Michael Lesser, who I've known for many years. <coughs> in the book Brain Chemistry Diet, which was written by Michael Lesser again, indicate three nutrients he believes are useful in reducing depression. What do you think? B6. B6, okay. Anything else? B12. B12, okay. B vitamins in general. Mm -hmm. Very good. Also, the, you know, there, there's really a whole list of them we could go through. Obviously, I would kick in vitamin C since we're just talking about vitamin C. Tryptophan is uh, important in his uh, scheme of things, but it, it gives uh, a lot of good clues that uh, what we put into our bodies have something to do with how we feel. Number nine. Very good. Alert. Always, <laughs> ni always nice to check and see if anybody's paying attention. It's actually tryptophan converts to serotonin. Back to the uh, old tryptophan again. <laughs> Number nine is, is the bananas convert, you convert uh, tryptophan to serotonin uh, in your body. Number 13, again this is according to a study in Great Britain. They've done a, quite an interesting survey of uh, people with mood disorders, very extensive survey. In a recorded study in Great Britain, what percent of people with mood disorders noticed that food choices affected how they felt? Okay, very, very We've got that. Boy, you're a quick learning curve. Uh, actually, it's 80 percent. So people, um, people have the perception that what they eat has something to do with how they feel. You don't need to be a rocket scientist if. if if the three foods you had, if you're depressed and you've pumped in some avocado, some bananas, and some walnuts, that should pick up your uh, serotonin level. And you don't, if, if that's true, then that ought to enhance how you feel if you're depressed or if you're down. So, uh, 14, and this is in the same British study, which of the following were considered food stressors? Sugar, alcohol, fruit, or all of them? Actually, it's sugar and alcohol. 
fruit were not considered stressors. These are, these are what people are reporting from their experience. Uh, the same study, which of the following were considered to be food supporters? Water, vegetables, fruit, oil-rich fish, or all of them? Oh, you're very good. <laughs> that is true. Actually, water was uh, number one for uh, what they thought improved how they're feeling. Um, particularly as, as we get older, and if you're into the, uh, whatever, this past 60 deal, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the major problems of aging is we dehydrate. So it's very important to have sufficient fluid. Um, when we're, when we're young, which we won't define that age, uh, when we're younger, uh, the ratio of, of uh, water inside the cell to outside the cell is 1.2 to 1. In other words, there's more water inside the cell than there is outside. By the time we're 60, it's 0.8 to 1, even if you're drinking enough water. So you're dehydrating all the time. So the goal when we see people, of course, is to encourage them not to turn into beef jerky, but drink sufficient water. Number 16. <clears throat> in a, so we've got the general response to foods. Mo most people, it's always fascinating that most doctors, not the doctors here, but doctors in general don't seem to appreciate that food has something to do with how you feel. And every trucker knows if you eat beans, you have a physiological response. <laughs> <coughs> and you have a psychological response in those around you. But it, it seems very simple to understand that food affects us, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, if I eat cabbage, I happen to like cabbage, but you ought to stay away from me. I mean, you don't want to be in proximity. Um, number 16, true or false, in addition to general responses to various foods, adverse reactions to specific foods can lead to depression. True or false? Absolutely true. Number 17, the center uses the blank test to detect adverse food reactions. Anybody have any idea what that is? It's a cytotoxic test. In that test, well, we'll get on to the next question first. Uh, number 18, white blood cells are like miniature brains and are derived from the same germ layer as brain tissue. True or false? That is true. And that's one reason the cytotoxic test is, is really quite exciting for people that have any uh, problems in uh, brain fog, not thinking well, various other things, because the white blood cells are like miniature brains and that the test is done by separating out the white blood cells and mixed with the various food antigens. And if the white blood cells ha stay happy and healthy, that's fine. If there's a kill off, then you have a positive cytotoxic test and the, and the degree of kill off is how positive that test is. But it's very good for anything, to, it's good for other things too, but it's especially good for anybody who has something that affects brain function because the white blood cells give you a pretty good clue as to what's going on in the brain. <clears throat> True or false? Neurotransmitters are derived from amino acids which can be measured in blood and urine. That is true. Amino, amino acids are the basic building blocks of protein and many neurotransmitters are made from amino acids and you can measure the amino acids which then gives you a clue as to what neurotransmitters are being made and in what proportion. Number 20, adequate amounts of fatty acids which are in every cell membrane can have a stabilizing effect on mood. True or false? That's true. You know, every cell membrane is made out of fatty acids. It's how your cells talk to each other, let things in or out, is all the movement of the little fatty acids in the membranes. Uh, so it's very important. True or false? Number 21, Inadequate thyroid function can lead to depression. That's a vigorous response. You know that one very well. <laughs> and it's certainly true. These are things, again, one wants to look at if you're, if you're down, feeling crummy. You want to look at some very basic information. How is your thyroid doing? And here we measure, uh, you know, standard thyroid tests are, are thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, which uh, is asking your pituitary gland how it thinks your thyroid is doing and a uh, T4 or thyroxin level, uh, act, which is what the, the, the thyroid makes. Uh, here we tend to measure T3 or triiodothyronine, which is the actual ingredient that gets into the cell. 
Most lab tests, that's a mathematical calculation, which we don't think is a good idea. You ought to actually measure the amount that's going for the cell. And uh, Dr. Honeyhockey here is our thyroid guru. 22 hormonal changes, such as l low testosterone, you notice I didn't put this in the feminine deal, can lead to depression. So we all know those other ones can. <coughs> true or false? Absolutely true. And the same thing is true with female hormone imbalances. Number 23, blood sugar changes can lead to depression. True. Matter of fact, in my early days when I was commenting about um, <coughs> suicidal thoughts, that was probably one of the biggest things that was going on that I was not uh, tuned into was the blood sugar changes that, you know, you can kick your blood sugar up and then you die, nose dive and then up and down, you get a kind of a roller coaster thing. <coughs> and in those days, of course, there was a different um, kind of thing. I used to, I was on the staff of three hospitals, and if you had a, um, a morning meeting, the, uh, the food fair was um, a sweet roll and uh, coffee. And then if you were lucky, you had grand rounds or rounds in the middle of the morning, and then that was a donut and coffee. <coughs> and then um, if you were lucky enough to have a meeting at the medical society, you'd have a hamburger, chips, and a cola drink. Um, and then, of course, you run home at night to have a martini to de-stress. <coughs> and all these things are not exactly the way to keep the body functioning very well or to have less depression. <coughs> And that really, that's changed now, by the way. You can go to, you go to a morning meeting at the hospital, they have fruit. Uh, so things have improved over the, over the years. Um, true or false, 24, short-term depression in response to unpleasant life events is normal and does not need treatment. True, very good. <clears throat> There's a tendency in our culture right now that one should never feel depressed about anything. Well, things happen that you ought to feel depressed about. And, and this notion that I'm depressed, you know, Somebody died, I just lost my job, whatever it is, and I should feel elated. So therefore, I must take a medication. This is absolute nonsense. <laughs> but anyway, if it's a short-term thing, it usually doesn't need treatment. If it prolongs, of course, obviously, yes. Uh, so anyway, there are things that happen that are depressing. Many, many things. Um, so, number 25, people who are depressed have been shown to breathe less deeply than people who are not depressed. True. True. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, um, deep breathing can, can have quite an effect. Uh, just like you to do this, you can de-stress, you know, by deep breathing. And what you need to do, we'll do this right now. You take a deep breath and hold it for six seconds, okay? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, and let it all out. <clears throat> and do that again. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006. And what you need to do is do that five times, and then you do that four times a day. This decreases um, tension. You know, you have two sides of the nervous system. You've got the central nervous system, and then you've got the autonomic nervous system, and there's the two sides, the sympathetic and parasympathetic, so all day long, we're kind of tensing up with whatever's going on. It's kind of like tightening a ratchet. <clears throat> when you take the deep breathing, when you do that, five deep breaths, it's like releasing the ratchet. It sends a message for the parasympathetic nervous system. And, and there have been studies showing that doing those deep breathing exercises four times a day is roughly equivalent to taking Valium in terms of its effect. Exercise has been shown to be useful in eliminating depression. True or false? True. That's true. But there have been studies in, in the University of Wisconsin, for instance, show that uh, getting people who are depressed to uh, run in groups reduces the depression by about 85% and in 85% of the people. Can everybody stand up just one second? Those that are standable. Just stand up one minute. We're going to do... <coughs> We'll do one minute of exercise. This is my favorite little exercise. But take one, one wrist, one hand, and you put another hand on top of it, okay? And then you resist with your upper hand, but you let the bottom hand win, okay? 
So you got a, you got an arm out here, palm up, hand on it. You just now do this 30 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. <gasps> yeah, we switch hands, switch arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Congratulations, give yourself a hand. <laughs> now you've done more than the average American whose main exercise is opening the car door handle. <laughs> Number 27, <clears throat> in people with a family history of depression, it is especially important to measure blood blank. Blood sugar is, is very good. That's good. In, in, if there's a family history, however, or multiple suicides, things like that, it's really important to measure the blood histamine level. Um, histamine is a neurotransmitter. It's the same chemical you take an antihistamine for, except that's in the tissues. This is in your blood cells. <clears throat> it's a neurotransmitter. There is a book, I think, of Carl Pfeiffer, who is a good friend and kind of an expert in histamine. Nutrition and mental illness upstairs, I think there's uh, Im information there about histamine that might be useful to glance at. <clears throat> Number 28, got to speed along here, I guess. What organ in the body is the big biggest user of energy in, and nutrients? The brain. The brain uses 25% of the oxygen, 25% of the sugar, multiple elements. Number 21, 29, if, if someone's brain is not working well, what is the first thought should come to mind? Depression. Depression, okay. That's good. Well, what I'd like to scream at you is, if my brain is not working, I must need one or more nutrients that I don't have enough of. It's really, pr I do not understand why that's a problem, but it is throughout the world. The, uh, in, uh, in medical school, we did an experiment where we divided up, uh, each of us had six rats, and we fed the rats a perfect diet or chow except for one nutrient. Each, each group of six rats had a different group in terms of what nutrient was withheld. Our group happened to be folic acid, someone else was vitamin B6, someone else was vitamin B1. It did not matter what the nutrient was that was withheld. Within a few weeks, the rats got sick. Within a few more weeks, they were feeble, stumbling around, couldn't walk. We were told to introduce the missing nutrient, and except for the rats that died, about a third of them did. Uh, in a few weeks, they looked like healthy, normal rats again with, with the nutrient. This is for lack of a single nutrient, which is something to keep. And these people, these, these rats, were eating better than the average American, you understand. I mean, they, were, they had a perfect chow except for one nutrient, only one nutrient missing. Um, so something to understand. That's just so important. See, the one point: if your brain is not working, find out what it's missing. Okay, number thirty. True or false? Being sick for a long time leads to depression. Absolutely, and that's why we see a lot of people who are depressed because they've been sick for a long time. It's not that they have a primary depression or anything like that. It's no fun not feeling well over a period of time. Thirty-one. Recent studies have shown. That sh this is really an interesting study, by the way, mostly for athletes. In any form, adversely affects the brain for up to 48 hours by impairing blank, which is the body's ability to convert muscle-stored glycogen to glucose, the brain's primary food. It's called gluconeogenesis. So it's G-L-U-C-O-N-E-O-G-E-N-E-S-I-S. 
but it's, it's that conversion that gets impaired. So th this is very, this, this is in athletes, because, you know, athletes are very interested in just to take off a hundredth of a second or something like that on their performance or a little bit of strength. But it's really quite interesting, done with uh, more recent studies about uh, how that affects for 48 hours. In the past, we used to say it affects for about four hours. Which group of fatty acids are known to be the best to stabilize mood? Any idea? Omega-3, Omega 3, absolutely. Number 33, changes in mood are a natural part of life. True or false? True. It's only the extremes that are the problem. Number 34, requires considerable concentration on your part. The incidence of depressive disorders varies throughout the world. Match the incidence of depression with the countries below. Connect them with lines to show the match. You can give that a whirl. Actually, one is not on there. I'm leaving in a couple of hours to go to Japan. Japan actually has the lowest incidence of depression. Anyway, if you've uh, given it a whirl, another, another minute or so, and we'll give that. Korea has the low, uh, of the ones listed here, Korea has the lowest incidence, be the 2%. Taiwan, the 3%. The USA, 7%. New Zealand, 11%. And France, 16% which is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to the French in the group. It's a, but it is kind of interesting that, in other words, it, it would appear, I mean, there are many, many factors involved, obviously, but dietary is one of them, that apparently the dietary choices that people make have something to do with whether or not you're depressed. And of course, one of the things, what do these places do that have low incidence? They eat fish. Of course, now we're worried about mercury, but anyway, the, um, just a little note here, the Japanese who eat the most fish are the least depressed. The omega-3 fat in most uh, uh, fish manipulates brain chemicals in ways that boost mood. In a groundbreaking new study, Harvard researcher Andrew Stoll found doses of omega-3 fatty acids improve symptoms of manic depression in 64% of the patients. Anyway, many other things. Just one little thing that you can do. And of course, you can measure fatty acids to see what levels you're on. 35, which I found very interesting, on the National Mental Health Information Center website, true or false, there is no mention about how nutrients affect mood. That is true. Not a, not a, at least what I've seen, not a single mention. So they don't know what the truckers know. <laughs> N number 36. Depression is more common in people with other ailments. That is true. Somewhere between 40 and 60 percent people who've had a heart attack have depression. 25 percent of type 2 diabetes. You can go on a long list of what there is. Um, 37, true or false? Antidepressants, and this is a depressing thing, are the second most common prescribed drugs in preschool children. True or false? And what's the most prescribed? Stimulants, written such as Ritalin. Okay, list uh, five foods that tend to improve mood. Well, you've had a few here. You could scop those. Certainly fish is one of them. Bananas. High vitamin D foods, particularly if you're bothered by the weather or the winter or you have seasonal affective disorder. Uh, vitamin D is, is uh, very important. Uh, there's some Australian researchers, um, just uh, met one of them, I was there not long ago, um, did a study with uh, uh, individuals with vitamin D or a placebo or sugar pill for five days in late winter. Subjects were unaware of which uh, they were going to get. It turned out those getting the vitamin D reported feeling better and the possibilities of vitamin D is called the hormone of sunlight, boosts levels of serotonin, and many other things in the body. And again, uh, vitamin D can be toxic, so you want to, again, it's nice if you measure the level, you have an idea what's going on and whether you're doing very well. Certainly vitamin B foods, uh, any, any, anything that has vitamin B is good for an antidepressant. Um, years ago, when I was in practice with Dr. Poling, 
this was before there were any health food stores or anything like that, we would give intravenous vitamin B injections seven days a week. And you know, the first thing I learned from him, he said, the way we keep people out of the state hospital is we give them intravenous vitamin B. And then about two weeks later, I met the flight surgeon for more pilots than anybody else in the country. He was in Boston, and he said, the way we keep pilots from having time zone fatigue is we give them intravenous vitamin B. I thought that was kind of interesting. And of course, now you can get all this stuff at health food stores and things like that. But there was nothing like that available at the time. I'm really uh, out of time here. So I'll just mention uh, uh, the uh, SAMI is a nutrient-based product that tends to reduce depression. That's true. Um, there's information upstairs if you want to read about it. It has to do with its capacity to be a methylator, which has to do with the biochemistry of the body. So uh, that's, um, uh, I just, uh, you know, Rollo May, who is a psychologist, uh, made the observation that, you know, we're all hit by the same hammers when you talk to people about what they're depressed by, whether it's uh, people, money, other people, various things, but we're all hit by the same hammers. And he, he made an interesting ob observation, and that was if, if you took three, three dolls, one made of porcelain, one made of plastic, and one made of steel, and you hit all of them with a hammer, of course the porcelain one would smash into pieces, the plastic one would be dented, and the steel one would give off a musical note. So it's not the hammer, it's what's going on. And, and I would like to suggest that having a stronger nutrient base makes you more easy, comfortable handling the hammers. Uh, in closing, I just want to say uh, a little, little limerick here. For, it's for want of a single nutrient, okay? Once upon a time, or so it has been said, King George III, when he was newly wed, suffered a childhood regression resulting from a serious bout with depression, which later provoked the American colony's succession, and it was traced to a disgraceful lack of zinc in his bread. And then he was dead. So before you get up and schmooze it to mingle, please pay attention to the words in this jingle. You are what you eat, from your head to your feet, and history is replete with health that's incomplete for want of just one nutrient, solitary and single. So, eat whole foods. Thank you very much. The preceding program was produced by the Center for the Improvement of Human Functioning International Incorporated and the Bright Spot for Health. For additional information concerning health or a listing of audio and videotapes dealing with health, visit the Bright Spot for Health website.